All right, let's update to 121.4. Oh, 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 all right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be updating our 1.23 project to 1.24. 1.21.4. Listen, at this point, I've said 1.21 so often, I don't even know what's going on anymore. The idea is that if you're not on 1.21.3, you will not be able to follow this tutorial because um, there is another one where I show how to update from 1.21.1 to 1.21.3. And now we're going to 0.4. But this, once again, we can copy over the actual version numbers over here. It's actually just the changes here. And I think that even the fabric version isn't too changed up. Actually, it is, it is, it is about five versions um, <laughs> that we've changed, but that's okay. Uh, is there a change in the loom? There is not. So we should be good to go on this so we can reload the Gradle changes or also reload the Gradle changes over here in the Gradle tab. And that should be that. Once again, we're just going to let this run through. And once again, it can take a couple of seconds, maybe a minute or so. And then just stay patient on the, until this is done. All right, there we go. 56 seconds. And let's, and let's take a look. So if I recall correctly, I mean, there are quite a few big changes. But overall, I don't think that we need to go through every single class again. There is a couple of things right here. So, for example, if we go to the berry bush, this now also needs a boolean. So, this is just a boolean B. I don't even know what this represents. Uh, let's just take a look in the override over here. Not, not this override, this override. Uh, that is the include data. Well, all right, we don't need to include the data, I guess. So, that's going to be okay. And then when it comes to the rest, I'm pretty sure that we should be fine. Uh, what you can also do in theory is you can just run the client and that is going to, well, prompt all of the different errors to pop up. And then we can go to problems and see all of the different errors over here. It looks like it is a lot, but most of the time um, it's actually not going to be that crazy because most of them are going to be in the mod model provider. Yes, the mod model provider has changed this a little bit. So we're now going from this data gen to the fabric model provider from, well, a different a different class, basically. And the changes here are as follows. Uh, this should be the same, though, right? Generate block state models. That's the same. And then this generator is just, once again, also changed its location. Same, I'm pretty sure, with the item model generator. Both of them ju have just changed their location. We can just do that. Data client no longer exists. And there are just a couple of things. Texture model also changed its location. Models change this location, texture map. So you can see a lot of this is almost the same. This is different. So this is now no longer the tint type, but the cross type. This is also the cross type. Awesome. So that actually fixes all of the issues in the block states. And then just the change right here, which... <laughs> Listen, okay, this is so stupid. Um, so instead of now putting in um, the head and all of that stuff, we now need to apparently put in the mod armor materials and then say helmet as a the type is now a string and then here a false because it's not diable listen okay i have no freaking idea what they were thinking with this change and i'm pretty sure in 121.5 this changes again because obviously like what why would the type be a string I have never seen such craziness before. Also, this is not even the correct one. This is uh, this actually needs to be the key, and we don't even have the key just yet. So we're just going to make a key. So this is going to be the key over here. We'll we'll make that in just a second. But that's going to be a registry key. We can actually take a look at this as well. Uh, there is it's literally string type. Incredible to me. Incredible. Yeah, no, that's exactly how the rest does it as well. So vanilla does it. So yeah. Very interesting, <laughs> but all right. Okay, there's one tiny change, and that is going to be the following. We now can actually do the item model JSON file for all of these, by the way. Um, I didn't actually want to open all of them, but that's okay. Uh, we can actually generate all of them. Uh, this will include the bow, I'm pretty sure, because the bow now is actually super freaking simple, if I recall correctly. Yes. The bow is now super simple and the chisel will also do. So the bow now is just going to be this. We're just registering the bow right here. Bam, bam. Awesome. And then the same thing with the chisel. 
That has changed a little bit. I'm going to copy this over and we're going to take a look at this. And you can basically see that it is the model data component types, of course. There we go. So if we have a component property, meaning the co coordinates over here, then we're choosing the chisel used. Otherwise, we're using the normal chisel. Now, you might ask, wait a second. But before we did all of this craziness with the model predicates. Yep, those no longer exist. The model predicates are gone. So we can delete the mod pr model predicates class and go to the client over here and delete that as well. It no longer exists. This is now all done via the new item stack JSON files. So I'm calling them item stack JSON files. However, they are located under assets tutorial mod items. So they are equivalent to block state JSON files, but for items. And we'll actually have one of those uh, manually for the Tomahawk. I don't think it is strictly necessary that we have this, but I'm just going to do that because it makes it a little bit easier to follow. You can see that it basically specifies the model. It is a type model. And then it points to the item model JSON file. Very important. I'm going to be calling those item stack JSON files. I think that makes it clearer if I'm calling them items, items JSON files. I don't like that. Item stack JSON files because item stacks and block states are similarly connected. Hopefully that is understandable. And that means that we no longer need any of this. And we also don't need the... Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. And there you go. And that should be okay in terms of the custom stuff here. The rest in the model provider, like I said, the mod armor materials has changed again because of course this time what we actually have is this i don't quite understand why this is so crazy but uh, basically we need to make a registry key so a custom registry key of equipment asset because that apparently just doesn't exist and then we have the pink garnet key and then this is also what we actually put in right here so this is going to be the pink garnet key alt control o to fix this issue and then we are like, oh, there are no more project errors. And that's not quite right because <laughs> pretty sure the item has changed again. Yes, the spawn eggs are now no longer the nice two colors. They are now all different textures. I am not a texture. So we're going to have a missing texture for the spawn egg for the time being. Uh, but that's going to be okay. I th Let's just run the client again and let's just see uh, if, um, if there's anything else. So the recipes, I'm pretty sure this is just the, like, it's just changed where it's at, right? Yeah, we just need to import them. There you go. I, I, I was like, I'm pretty sure that there's nothing else. Mm. But, I mean, there's something else, but like, not in that case. Uh, the trim templates no longer exist, so we can no longer add it to that tag. So we just delete that. And then basically, I'm just going to keep running the client until... Well, until it works, I guess that's the idea. The mod armor item, of course, has changed once more. And this now changes to the asset ID. So basically, all, everywhere where it says model and model ID, we now change it to asset ID. Easy enough. Let's run it again. And let's see. I think there's not that much ch that changed. Yes, so something else changed in the trims. But that is, I think, almost the last things. So, all right. So here we simply need to delete the item model index. And we can also delete it from here and from here as well. So that is pretty easy for the materials. And then the patterns also actually changed. We can go to here as well. And, oh, apparently they didn't. Well, there you go. Only the trim material changed. Let's reload again. And might be it. Let's see. I think we got everything right. It looks promising. So I think we're actually going to start. However, in game, you'll find that no item is going to have any sort of texture because, well, I mean, none of them have the items item stack JSON file. So while we can jump into the game, well, the game also crashed because we didn't update roughly enough items. Honestly, that's a very fair thing because I may or may not have forgotten about that again. However, this time what we're going to do is we will remove REI from this. A reason is because the changes in the compat in 1.21.4 are so big that I was unable to get that to run. So we're just going to comment this out right here. So the mod compile for both REI as well as architecture and Cloth config we're going to remove. And then the compat over here, I'm just going to delete that folder or that uh, package. You can, however, you can, of course, take this and save it somewhere else. I highly recommend you do so. But in my case, I'm just going to delete that. It's going to be okay. And there we go. 
once that is done, we have seen that the game works. So let's just run data gen to generate, uh, I think it's like 300 different JSON files or something like that. Something like actually insane. Um, so yeah, let's just run this and let's see if that works. But it should work. I'm, I'm pretty confident about that. Well, spoke too soon. Of course, right here in the model provider, what do we have? We cannot, we cannot, we cannot load this on the environment type server. Yes, there is a tiny thing that we need to change. And that is in the build.gradle file. There's something here. There is something that we need to change. And that is the configure data generation. We want to put in curly brackets and then say client equal true like this. That is extremely important. We need to add this. And then it is going to only generate on the client, which in this case is exactly what we want. So then running data gen, this error no longer appears. It will run through entirely and we'll get the 200 JSON files or whatever it is to generate. I'm pretty sure it's like an obscene amount. Obscene amount. So this is still not working. Oh, the reason why this most likely is not working is because we're using the data generation already existing configuration right here. What you will most likely have to do is go to Gradle and then go to Tasks Fabric and then use this run data gen. I think this one should work but because it should take the thing from Gradle instead of, well, the already existing configuration. I think that that should be it. And there you go. That one runs through 91 JSON files. Definitely not 200, but fair enough. It's still not, 91 is still pretty crazy. And what you will find is that under generated data or assets, rather, we ha now have tutorial mode, block states, items, models. And this item, these are the item stack JSON files that I was referring to, which now basically replace the model predicates. So as before, we had the model predicates. And now let's see, for example, in the bow, you can see that it points to a model. And I'm pretty sure that is not going to make it work because, <laughs> because this JSON file should actually look different. Well, I mean, it can happen. I think that we might actually need to add another thing in the model uh, file over here. Um, I'm, quite, I'm a little bit uh, unsure. Is there such a thing as the register bow method? There is. Okay. This one was missing. Not pink garnet. Count bow. There we go. Now, if I add this line over here, all of a sudden we run data gen again. Look at the bow. This is a normal item stack JSON file. <laughs> but if it's a bow, well, then things change because, of course, it needs to change its texture. Uh, OK, f fair enough, I guess. Um, I guess we so, listen. OK, the only thing I can tell you is that th having both of those is what you need to do in, in NeoForge. And that works totally fine. That's why I did both of them. But apparently the register bow already makes a basic item, as you can see. Fair enough. All right. Sure. Fine. Then just do one of them and then we can see four JSON files written. Yeah, one of them is going to be this one. There we go. Exactly what you want to see. So, of course, the texture needs to change and the texture changes when we're using this item. We are looking at the duration of the use here. And if it's at basically every every tick, I would assume it changes by 0.05. And the thresholds here are 0.65 to change it to pulling one and then pulling two. And there you go. That's the idea. And that is I mean, that's that's the new items, item stack JSON files. They can be quite versatile. And one more indication that everything is getting JSON filed, J JSON, JSON serializable and co code codecified. I I'm telling you, it's all it's all part of the Java marketplace. But let's not get into conspiracy theories right now. Let's jump into the game and see if it works. And here we are in the game. And as you can see, we still have, I mean, pretty much everything that is going on since last time. We got this. The Mantis is still roaming around here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it is, but I mean, it doesn't really matter even that much. We can just uh, get him out here. I, I'm surprised that this egg still has a texture, but that's, I mean, totally fine. The Count Bow apparently has no normal texture, but it does have a texture when we're pulling it back. We might have to take a look at that. The Spectre Staff does not work because it doesn't have a an items an item stack JSON file. The rest here do work totally fine, like we would expect them to. Even the pink garnet lamp, I'm pretty sure works. It just works absolutely fantastic. Uh, main thing, what about the Kalpen bow? I would like to take a look at that just for the sake of argument, because I'm not quite sure. So it is missing a normal model. So I'm not quite sure why this would throw an issue then. That's strange to me. I believe what we need to do is we need to use the register with texture source this i think this one right am i crazy 
We need to use the upload method instead, and then we should be good to go. So if we were to do that, I think, I think, I think, maybe, just maybe, it's going to work. Because if I understand it correctly, the upload method will only create a item a model JSON file, which obviously, as you can see, we don't have a countable one, but now we do. Absolutely fantastic, and now obviously the bow will work, and with that, everything is going to work. So that is the... I mean, more or less full update to 1.21.4. Most changes over here were, of course, data gen as well as the new item stack JSON file. Very interesting indeed. And yeah, I mean, if listen, if you made it through, if you went through the, uh, I don't know, like 45 minute one before and the 15 minute one here and you're crazy enough, then we will still do a 0.5 update video as well over here for Fabric. I will also link down below the blog entry if there's anything else that you might have added to your mod that we didn't cover over here. There, I will link the blog entry where basically all of the changes are listed again for Fabric. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. I still hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And next time here, we're going to update to 1.21.5 and then... Hopefully we're almost done with, with 121, okay? I, I just hope that the next one is not going to be 121.6, please. Oh god. Anyway, until next time. So, yeah.